Hello, this is Salone Kheer and my roll number is 6239. Today, I am going to tell you about RFLP analysis. Before we jump into the process of RFLP analysis, first we need to know what exactly is RFLP. So, RFLP stands for Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism. It is a type of polymorphism that results from variation in the DNA sequence recognized by restriction enzymes commonly termed as molecular scissors. Restriction fragment length polymorphism is a technique invented in the 1984s by the British scientist Alec Jeffries during research into hereditary diseases. RFLP is a difference in homologous DNA sequence that can be detected by presence of fragments of different lengths after digestion of DNA samples with specific restriction endonucleases. Restriction endonucleases are bacterial enzymes commonly used by scientists to cut DNA molecules at known locations. RFLPs are used as markers on genetic maps. It is used for analysis of unique patterns in DNA fragments in order to genetically differentiate between organisms. These patterns are known as variable number of tandem repeats, commonly abbreviated as VNTRs. Typically, gel electrophoresis is used to visualize RFLPs. RFLP as a molecular marker is specific to a single clone or restriction enzyme combination. RFLPs uh, are unique in different species and hence their lengths would be varied. The dif distance between the two sites of cleavage are different for different organisms and thus when digested by restriction enzyme, they would create fragments of different lengths. The similarity and differences of these patterns uh, ge thus generated can be uh, used to differentiate species or even strains from one another. So, uh, how is it done exactly? First of all, we have to extract the DNA, then comes DNA fragmentation and this is followed by gel electrophoresis and after that visualization of the bands. So, these are the exact steps. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to extract the DNA from the desired organism and expose them to restriction endonucleases. Now, run the digested DNA on gel electrophoresis. After this, we denature the separated bands using NaOH, so they are now single-stranded. This is followed by sudden blotting where DNA is transferred from gel to nitrocellulose membrane. Then we visualize and detect our desired fragments using a probe. Once the probe is hybridized to the membrane, we put an X-ray film on the membrane and visualize it. These small probes bind only where the probe binding sequence is present on the DNA. And if the cleavage site is absent on the DNA, the restriction endonuclease wouldn't have acted on it and thus the fragment would be absent. The DNA fragments where the probe binds will fluoresce and the others won't. So, uh, this picture is for uh, visual aid. Here, we took blood sample from the patient and from the, the nucleated cells, we isolate the purified DNA. Isolate and purify DNA. So, after that, uh, we digest the DNA uh, and uh, then it is run on agarose gel. So, after this, uh, we treat it with NaOH and perform sudden blotting. Uh, then it is hybridized on a nitrocellulose membrane with probes. This is followed by autoradiography and we can visualize the bands. The two ladders on the border are the standards that are run along with the unknown sample. These fragments are of known length and molecular weight. This enables us to compare the bands obtained with those of the ladders. Uh, and the bands that run uh, f the farthest are the smallest or the lightest and those that lag behind are heavier. So, uh, say we perform this for Pseudomonas species. So, what can we get to know about uh, Pseudomonas from this? We can know its origins and where it lies on the taxonomy tree. Then we can map its entire genome. To, me uh, to measure recombination rates, uh, we, which can lead to a genetic map with the distance between RFLP loci, this technique can be used. In humans, we can detect genetic diseases. 
if a woman is pregnant and the family suspects that the child would have some genetic disorder because it runs in their family uh, we can go for this technique in forensics we can do dna fingerprinting and get to know things like who the corpse belongs to etc so uh, the next picture shows us ab about rflp and allele mapping so as we can see the site 2 has disappeared in allele a2 and uh, so uh, the restriction endonuclease won't cut the dna at that site so when we uh, so when an individual has allele A1, they would show band 2 to 3 on visualization, which is shorter than the A2 band 1 to 3. So now the parents are heterozygous uh, uh, for this trait. So they both have A1 and A2 allele. So these are the possible phenotypes for the progeny. The first one is homozygous for A2, the third one for A1. And the middle one is heterozygous A1 and A2. So we got to know this from uh, these uh, standards, comparing the standards. And uh, uh, over here, this one shows only A2 band and this one only A1. Whereas the middle one shows both the bands. So as every coin has two sides, this technique also has its own limitations and disadvantages. The technique was developed back in the 20th century and technology has developed a lot after that. So RFLP analysis is quite expensive as compared to the techniques we have now. It takes days or even weeks at time to get the results and thus we can call it pretty time consuming. RFLP analysis is very sens isn't very sensitive and uh, requires a large amount of DNA sample. So uh, thus, when it comes to microbial taxonomy, we would first have to culture the organism and as we know, some organisms are fastidious, so it can be a little tough. And since we have to extract such a large amount of DNA, it becomes quite laborious as well. So, that's it for my presentation. Thank you so much.